if you're not familiar with what sudo is or sudo, people pronounce it different ways, it is a way to run a command as a different user, most commonly used for using a non-privileged user and running commands as root. Now, that's obviously not the only way that you might use sudo. You could use it if a tool or script runs as a different user and you need to use sudo to run as that user to run the script, you can also use it for that. But most commonly, it's just to give people administrative level access to do certain things to get their job done or do all the things. If you're like the systems administrator, you might give, give all sudo access to somebody. The example I'm going to give you here is just say you have a web developer who needs to be able to restart Apache. We're going to define some commands that say you can manage Apache using systemctl, and we're gonna apply it to a group of users, make a user put them in that group and show you they can do the things, right? So in Etsy, there's a folder called sudoers.d, and these are where you would drop in rules for sudo. You can see there's one already in here because of the lab environment that we use. We're not gonna to touch that one. We're gonna make a file called web team, and paste this in here. And it looks, I think, like it came through clean. You could always use cat-vet. No, I'm looking for things like Google Docs, and this is like inside baseball, folks, but Google Docs replaces some characters with other characters that look prettier, right? Like double dashes. It always like condenses them into a long dash. And a terminal's, yeah. what the hell is that thing? <laughs> One where it uses a directional yeah. symbol. So we usually have to be careful when we're making these rules, but it looks like this is coming through clean. Now, there is a quick way to test this. And I, I think you could probably use this tool to edit that file in the first place. But if you open up a tool called Vi sudo, what this will do is it'll open up the usual Etsy sudoers file. And then obviously we're not making changes to the sudoers file. You just quit back out of it. And what it does is one of the things that Vi sudo does, which is helpful, is it does a sanity check on your configuration when you exit it. So if you put something in there that was totally wrong, it'll come back and say, there's something wrong. And it also checks those drop-in files. I think you can edit those to Yeah, so we can edit that file directly. Opens it up in your favorite editor. It'll be whatever your terminal is set to the default editor. <laughs> I tell you that only because it does that sanity check. It'll double check and say, do the rules that you just put in there look sane? Because if you borked your sudoers file, then sudo, I'm pretty sure, just kind of unanimously doesn't work properly after that, unless you go back and fix the thing that you did wrong, right? So what I did there, I made a command alias called web services, and it has a whole list of commands that you're allowed to run or a group of commands that are in web services. Your rule is allowed to run these or not allowed to run these. You could make it exclusive instead of inclusive. I usually do inclusive rules, but I could imagine a case where there's certain things you absolutely don't want people to run. You could make a command set for that and say, you cannot run this. So anyway, we make a rule here that says percent web, which says the web group is allowed to run on all hosts and use the web services command group without a password, right? So that's essentially what we're doing here. You have to get all the syntax right, and some of it doesn't make sense. Like, why is the word all in there twice? Well, one of them is hosts and one of them is users. Why isn't just all hosts and all users? I don't know, but that's the way sudo is made. All right, so we're going to close that back out. Then we're going to make a user, right? We're going to give Nate a user. We're going to add, and we're going to make a group called web. And then we're going to put Nate in that group. Oh. Ah, so we're saying group mems, the group we're working with is web. We're going to add Nate. Now, if I did an ID on Nate, I think this will work. Yeah, now it tells us Nate is in the web group. If I switch over to Nate, I do ID here. It tells me, yep, you're in the web group. Now, some cool things about sudo. If you don't know what sudo commands you can run, if you do a sudo dash L, it'll list them for you. And here it tells me the user Nate may run the following commands on this host. 
without a password, I can run all those things that I put in my command alias. So now if I did a sudo systemctl, I don't know, stop httpd, it should allow me to do that. But notice that these things are exclusive to httpd. If I try to stop sshd, it's going to tell me, give me your password. Because it's not included in the things I'm allowed to do without a password. Now, this user actually doesn't have a password. So I don't know if it's not going to actually give me a good demo here. But if I put in the proper password for it, then what it would do is it would say, no, 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 you're not allowed to do that. You can't run that command, right? So that's how that'll look. So there we go. A totally working <laughs> pseudo example. Scott, what do you think? I think that's great. Nate is actually poking fun at me because early on into the terminal, uh, Eric and I tried to do a pseudo episode and it was like a disaster because we were putting together last minute. We didn't test things. Syntax is very finicky with sudo and man, it was just like. If you skip back a couple minutes to when I introduced sudo, you'll know what episode you should go watch if you want to see it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good times. <laughs>